if the market completely comes to a real, you know, the stock market really crashes or something and something really bad happens, I'll pick up the phone and start acquiring more market share like we were talking about. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of calling the market good or bad. Yeah. And in my opinion, there's no such thing as a good or bad market. Mm -hmm. There's up markets and down markets. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's good or bad or not is all in your head. Like mm -hmm. you, people need to buy and sell when prices are going down. They need to buy and sell when they're flat and when they're mm -hmm. going up. And mm -hmm. uh, you seem to uh, get that early on and, and take advantage of that. If anything, you know the the. the bad market as, as agents incorrectly call it is an opportunity to go out and grab more market share so, so walk us through that a little and what that looked like back then in 2010 i assume maybe you were picking up some really great investment opportunities as well with, with the volume you were doing you know, dude i i love that you said market share because there's a lot going on with the word market share right there's the fact that i believe market share is not how many transactions or or listings or or you know business you have it's it's what agent has the most real lifelong relationships with property owners in the area whoever has the most of those owns the entire market period and when I in the down market one of the one of the hundred books I read was called shift by Gary Keller right. and it's an excellent book have you read it yeah yeah I read Dude. That one, uh, probably six or seven years ago dude I read that at the bottom of the market man and I was like oh my gosh did really I mean it really opened my eyes up to how the whole game works and um, it's it's an incredible but one of the one of the things in that book talks about exactly what you said and you might have got it from the book when the markets down and all the agents leave there's so much market share just laying on the table there for you. If you'll put the work in to talk to the people, create the relationships and build the rapport, even if they don't do anything right now, when the market rebounds, they are going to do something. And if you create as many of those as you can, when the market rebounds, you're going to, your business explodes, explodes. So when I got back in the business in 2008, that was the stock market crash. And everybody wants to associate the stock market crash with the real estate crash. It's not the same thing. The real estate started to come down in 2005 in my area. Maybe 2006 or seven in other areas is different per area, but it was before 2008 is when real estate started to go down. And I got back in in 2008. Now the market, the real estate market was coming down and the 2008 happened and then it continued to go down from there. Um, and, and I did exactly what you're talking about. Um, 2008, you know, I made about 90 grand and I was happy. I was twice as much as I made on the oil rig, risking my life the year before. In 2010, I make 100,000 and, you know, I'm like ecstatic at this point. And I'm still not really to where I really want to pony up and buy a property yet, you know. I don't, but 2011, when I made that money during the oil spill, I made more money and it gave me all that confidence, I did pick up a couple properties. And i um, really glad I did. I still own those properties right now. And they've actually doubled in price. And, um, and, and, I, and, I, and I rent them out, you know, and it's, it's just been a, a, great, a great situation. But here's the thing about markets crashing. Closing, what I learned is the bottom line, regardless of what the market does, closings continue to happen every single day. There's not a day that goes by, there's not a closing. It might go down to from 100 to 10, but there's still 10 closings. That's 20 opportunities to represent a buyer or seller in one day. There's 30 days, sometimes 31 or 28 days in a month. You know, and all you need is, is one, two, three, four deals a month to really, you know, excel. I mean, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I do too. Well, now, you know, I'll just jump in real quick. If, if you do four deals, you know, out of 20, as opposed to four deals out of a hundred, you've got, you know, what is 20% 20, 20 of the market share versus 4%, right? The same amount of work. Exactly, exactly. You know, and if you're putting, you know, if you're putting the pieces to, of the puzzle together when the market's down and less agents are in the business and you're the one doing all that business, then you have more past clients. 
whenever the whenever the market comes back and these agents come back in the business, well, they're late to the game now. You've already established all these clients and all this all this business, and you have all this market share in in the palm of your hands. And that's that's what happened to me. Um, in 2008, I really hit it hard. 2009, 2010, all the way. Every time, I'm still hitting it hard. I'm, st I'm still <laughs> the market is still crashed to me, Dan. Like I'm still, it's still falling. You know, like I, like in my mind, I'm, I'm I'm still every day. I'm I'm starting over at zero, and I'm fighting like hell to 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 make it to the top of the mountain. So, um, but closings happen every day. Another thing I want to shed a little light on is the fact that business is unlimited for every single agent. Nobody, there's the competition does not exist at all. People are so concerned with the competition and there's there's this agent doing that and there's this agent dominates that area and all this stuff. It doesn't exist. What if 15 agents are calling expires? Well, they haven't talked to you yet. You have a unique personality that no one else on the face of the planet has. You have certain ways about you. The, the way that you talk, walk, act, move, the way you look, everything is different. And until that prospect experiences who you are, you don't know if there's a connection or not. It doesn't matter about all the other agents. It matters about you and the prospect, which is a human that we have to connect with and do our best. And our job is people. You know, we're not in the real estate business. We're in the people business. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's... You cannot lose if you understand these principles. Doesn't matter where you get your leads from. I'm a big circle prospector. I like picking out a subdivision, calling them, and connecting with them voice to voice. I think voice to voice is the reason why technology will not replace real estate agents. But I don't care if it's Facebook leads or Zillow or for sale by owners, expires, or wherever your leads come from. To me, it doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff. It's unlimited. For each and every agent, there's a process and there's more than you can handle. Go get yours. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Uh, what does your business look like today? So you're, you're, you've been at 100 plus sales for since 2014, so like almost five years or, or going on five. How much of that business is, is buyer business versus listing business? Mm -hmm. um, walk, walk us through that for a little bit. About, let's see, two years ago, 2017, it was about, it's always been about 80-20 listings over buyers you know, forever. It's been 80% listings. But last year, when the market flattened out, we all had to make big adjustments. And I don't refer to myself as a listing or buyer's agent. I'm a real estate agent who really enjoys helping anyone buy or sell. Doesn't matter to me what you wanna do. I'm gonna show property. I show all my properties. I, I go to all listing appointments, all closings, all inspections. I do all of that. And now, last year it was 50-50. 50% buyer, 50% uh, listings. This year so far has been 50-50. So it just kind of flows with the market, you know, whatever whatever the market kind of does. If the, it, right now, I'm not making near as many phone calls as I used to make, but I've put my time in. I've made those calls, I've created those relationships, I'm doing those, uh, I'm staying in touch, and I've built that database, and I have such a large client database of people that are never gonna use another agent that I can afford, like, it's all I can do to keep up with people I have to follow up with every day, you know? So um, if the market crashes tomorrow and goes to, you know, two deals a, a day, then, and it really slows down, which by the way, today I did my weekly email. Last year up to this point, we had 243 condos closed. This year, we're like 184 so far this year. Huge drop in number of trade. Huge drop in number of transactions. Now, are you seeing prices go down, or is it just less transactions? Or they have, they have, they have went down just a little bit, and I don't know. Like I've seen a couple lower sales. I haven't really seen maybe the trend. I've seen a couple lower sales, but I don't know if you know. You always have a fluctuate. You know, you always have different things sell for different prices. So, we'll just, only time will tell if it's an actual trend or not. But um. But yeah, man, definitely houses were the same. Uh, houses in my area were, were the same number of transactions as last year. But um, yeah, so if the market completely comes to a real, you know, the stock market really crashes or something and something really bad happens, I'll pick up the phone and start acquiring more market share like we were talking about. You know, now it's, 
that would actually make me happy because I'll have time to do what I love to do, which is call. I love calling. I'm going to do live calls tomorrow on YouTube. I, I do calls now um, live um, for, the, for the coaching students.